Hey guys, what is going on? This is Cardinal Bird 5 and today I have a video for you guys explaining and giving some tips on how to beat Conquest Extreme. I want you guys to bear with me. This is going to be a long video. I have a lot of little tips in there. Uh, I'm going to give all the routes uh, for you guys and as you guys can see here, here's the last three rewards that you guys get. I'm sure you guys already know you guys uh, get the Molina in the Kent plus you get 35,000 stubs. I'm also going to try to answer a few of your questions. I know a lot of people are asking me you know, do you think I can beat this? Is it worth it? Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go over all of that. Uh, if you guys just want to skip to the routes, I'm going to put some timestamps in the description. Um, so feel free to just go ahead and skip right to that. Uh, but this video is probably going to be lengthy. I'm not sure. It might be It might be 30, 35 minutes. I apologize. I try to make it short as possible because um, I did want to give you guys a lot of detailed tips out there. I also want to ask that you guys like, share the, like and share this video. And please subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. I plan to do a lot of MLB The Show 18 content, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Alright guys, so now since I've shown you guys the rewards, um, I'm sure there's a few questions you guys have, and I want to go over some basics uh, before we get started on some actual uh, tactics here with the map. Uh, the first question that a lot of you guys are asking me on Twitter, I'm sorry I haven't been able to respond to everything. But this is kind of the purpose of the video. Um, is it worth it? I think that's kind of hard to say. Uh, I mean, you do get some really good cards. For instance, that Kemp to me is very comparable to the Trout. I think the Trout's a little bit better since he's more balanced. Plus, you get the Molina. And you get a lot of really good cards. Uh, you also are able to grind while you're doing this. You also earn stubs, post-game rewards. You get 50,000 stubs for just completing the last few missions. So, it is, it is definitely a grind and I'm going to tell you how much of a grind it is actually by going over here to the standings and show you how many games I've played against computer. Now I've only played I think three games, three nine inning games, the rest have been all conquest. I played two nine inning games to get the, the conquest done, the original conquest, and the rest all have been you know for conquest part one and conquest part two. By the way I am going to have a conquest part one video for you guys. I am doing the extreme one first so I know that's kind of weird. Uh, but just want to let you guys know that. So you guys see there, I have played 221 games versus the computer. I know. I pretty much have no life this game. Um, I did take a few weeks or a few days off of work. So I was able to get some games in. Um, I don't, for me personally, I do think it's worth it for most people. Now, if you're able to win BR every single time, uh, win events over and over, uh, maybe you guys you know want to focus on that to begin with and kind of slowly chip away at this uh, but I do think it's worth it so here's how many games I played uh, it took me 200 wins basically to complete conquest part one and part two I would say about 40 of those games were the original conquest you know to get all the missions done and I would say 160 of those um, games or wins or whatever you want to call it were attributed to conquest extreme so I will say, I, I think I lost one or two games total while doing Extreme, and it was very early on. Uh, some of the first missions, in my opinion, are the hardest. If you can get past the initial missions, which we're going to go over here in a bit, I think you guys are going to be good, golden. Um, so yeah, is it worth it? I really think it depends. I really think that's a question you have to ask yourself. I'll also say that I probably spent about 40 hours doing this, so I know that's a lot of hours. So you just kind of have to ask your guys self, you know, is it worth it if you work all the time and you're only able to get five hours in a week maybe it's not worth it if you have a lot of time though say you have 20 hours to play a week i don't know i'm just throwing a number out there maybe you can put 10 hours of that uh towards the grinding the other 10 of playing online or whatnot so just kind of chip away at it now if you just want to go right at it and get those cards right away and you got some time keep in mind it's going to take about 40 to 50 hours uh it may have taken me a little bit longer because i was also grinding putting some bids up um you guys can see here's all the career arcs i've done while i was grinding this to go to programs. I made some really good progress here. Uh, you guys can see I've done a lot of these. A lot of these, I'm, some of these I'm saving for the nine inning games, especially like the starting pitchers. But you guys can see I knocked out a lot of programs while doing this. I'm very close to the Billy Williams, by the way. Just have like one more. A lot of these I'm very close. I just have a few more missions to do, and some of these you cannot complete yet. So I knocked out a lot of stuff while I was doing Conquest. I highly recommend that. Uh, it is kind of annoying because you're going to have to switch back and forth your lineup. So they really need to add multiple lineups. Maybe next year we can see that. Uh, so the next question a lot of people are asking me 
you know, am I going to be able to complete this? You know, I can't beat the computer on Legend. You know, I can't beat them on Hall of Fame. Um, I think if you can't beat the computer on Legend, I, th you know, every single time, I think that's that's fine. It's it's not easy to beat them on Legend every single time. Um, I know for some of you guys, you might be newer to the game, but I do think that if you can't beat the computer on All Star, at least All Star, I don't think this is possible for you. I'm just going to be honest out there. Uh, if you can't beat the computer on All Star, I don't really see how it's possible because you're going to have to at least still fans on All Star. I recommend even doing Hall of Fame. Uh, for like maybe the first five to six turns and then you can go to all-star uh, now I will say I probably played about you know out of my total of a hundred I'm just throwing this out there a total of 160 170 games I'd say I played a total of 10 to 15 on legend that may be a little bit high maybe more towards 10 I didn't play that many games on legend guys I stole uh, fans for the first few turns and then after that I mainly played on Hall of Fame for still fans and then near the end I was doing all-star and even the last few turns um, I started skipping them so yeah if you guys cannot beat the computer consistently in all-star this is gonna be very challenging for you if you guys can beat them consistently in all-star which for me personally I don't think it's that bad uh, I know I've been playing this game a while but it seems like all-star difficulty is a lot easier this year so if you can stack your team and you can somewhat hit the ball um, I think you'll be fine. Next thing I want to talk about is what kind of team you should build to win your games consistently. Uh, this is just kind of a random lineup. I, you know, I'm kind of like halfway grinding and halfway got a good lineup. But for me personally, I went pretty much all power. I think that's the most consistent way to beat the computer. Um, I'll also recommend maybe if you're not as uh, consistent of a hitter, uh, you can't square up the ball left and right. You know, you're struggling. Maybe put a few speed guys in there. That way, you guys can just you know contact swing, get a few blue hits. Or bring him off the bench and try to steal some bags. I think it's really easy to steal bags. So I'd either recommend going for, at least for your offensive lineup, power or speed, depending on your skill level. Uh, if you struggle, I'd say more rely on speed. If you're a good hitter, you're an accomplished hitter, you can make the championship series division or the world series division. I would say go uh, with more power than anything. Because you square up a ball in this game, especially a power swing, more often than not, you're either going to get a double or a home run or you're going to hit a hard. So... That's the most consistent way. As far as pitching, um, I really, I use I kind of treat it like BR. I kind of put some starters in there with good per nines and whatnot, but I really don't think it matters. I just usually would just use them for like one out, and then I would mainly use my bullpen. Here's some guys I like to use in my bullpen. Uh, Brad Hand was one of my favorite guys to use in the bullpen. I also grinded this Lee Smith out, and I just kept using him. He was really good. Asuna, uh, Drew Storen, Rivera's not bad. Iglesias, Britain's pretty solid. And let's see, Patances is real wild. I really don't recommend him because, you know, I got lit up a few times. He's just so wild and it's really hard to control in Legend. Uh, this Billy Wagner is not too bad. Just look for good per nines, guys, especially if they're playing up on inside edge. Um, and one thing I'm going to have for gameplay-wise for pitching, pitch to the corners. If they got power, pitch down and away, you know, just pitch to the corners. And that's why sinker ballers are also really good because uh, they will chase sinker balls low in the zone and you get a lot of weak grounders. So I definitely recommend doing that as well. But just pitch to the corners. Uh, do not pitch the do not pitch power hitters up and in or up and away. Try to keep the ball down. And then when you get two strikes, honestly, just spam either like splitter, change up low, or slider away, or cutter in on the hands. That's usually the best way to get them out. Uh, it's not like playing online versus an opponent. They have really weird tendencies, and it seems like if you keep the ball low for the most part, uh, you'll be fine. A tip for batting. I kind of give you guys lineup advice. But a key tip for uh, for batting is to be super patient, especially when you're playing on Hall of Fame or Legend. When you're playing on Hall of Fame or Legend, they throw about 55% strikes, 45% balls. A lot of times you can get two or three uh, extra base runners a game by just taking pitches and getting runners on. I know that's kind of a hassle, especially if you're trying to get games in fast. Um, but I'm telling you guys, when you're playing those games, you have to win on Legend or Hall of Fame. Which isn't a lot of the time. A lot of the time, like, you know, the first few times I recommend doing Legend or Hall of Fame, still fans. And there's going to be a few strongholds where you can play them, you know, either on Legend or you can choose to reinforce. I would always try to play those games on Legend or Hall of Fame if possible and just really focus. The game might take you 20, 25 minutes, um, but that's okay. All right, a few more things here. Um, so for the most part, I pretty much played for every territory early on. Meaning if, you know, I was just playing, for instance, if I was just playing right over here for this random territory, I would not sim it, I'd play it. Do not sim stuff until the end, and even then, I probably still wouldn't even risk it. Because at the very end, I started to sim stuff, and I still probably would not recommend doing that. Um, so I would just play the games out 
I, like again, it's gonna it's gonna take you guys a lot of games. That's why I recommend grinding while you're doing so. Um, so yeah, it's not like the original Conquest, Conquest Part One. Uh, you want to play a lot of games. You don't want to leave anything to risk, uh, especially especially later on. Um, now I did I do admit I simmed a few territories at the very end, but that's because it was very lopsided. But I was also kind of in a hurry. So probably not the best advice, but if you do decide that at the very end. So what I did here for Toronto was, as you can see I have 28 reinforcements right here, uh, 28 million fans. Uh, I reinforced them at this stronghold right here, but I also put a few over here at this stronghold. Toronto was my last stronghold I captured, by the way. But I put a few at this stronghold right here just in case something crazy happened in a sim. And I, had, I started out with like 35 fans. I'm telling you, sometimes you'll lose some of these sims like it'll be 10 to 1 and you'll lose so just in case something happened you know I'm on turn 12 right here it took me 12 turns I could have easily beat it in 9 or 10 turns you do have some leeway uh, but just in case you're gonna do something like this make sure you have some reinforcements to save to save your butt in case something went wrong so if something crazy would have happened right here I could have gotten these 8 reinforcements and I could have made it over here now I probably would have had to play them on all-star hall of fame um, but yeah, I did that just in case to cover myself. So uh, those are a few tips. Now we're going to start getting in turn by turn and uh, how you guys should take routes on the map for each mission. All right, guys. So we're going to start going over some route strategies. Keep in mind there are many ways to do this, uh, but a few of them, especially the first few missions, you have to be uh, very exact and precise. When we get to the later missions, you can have a little bit more flexibility. Um, and I would also like to shout out a few people that helped me, at least a few of my resources. I know I've been talking to a lot of people on Twitter, uh, so I thank all of you guys, but a few personally that helped me, uh, complete this was one, a YouTuber, he's pretty small, pretty new, and I'm going to link his channel in the description, uh, but his name is Casual Gamer. He posted a video on Sports Gamers Online, I'll also put their channel down below. And I also put the link of the video down below because it is really, it's pretty helpful as well. So it's pretty good. Um, but anyways, he helped me out. He doesn't have too many subs, guys, so please go give him a sub. I'd really appreciate it. And like I said, he put a lot of work in this video, or his video, so I'm sure he'd really much appreciate a sub. Um, plus, he was one of the first people to actually put out some uh, good Extreme Conquest tips. Um, the other person I got pretty good advice from, and this guy was from Reddit. I don't go on there too often, but I was looking for some pretty good advice, you know, on how to beat the map. And this guy I had seen on there, um, he was really detailed. Uh, username is Leonard B19. So I definitely want to give him some credit because he helped me a lot, especially the first few rounds. And he also gave me some pretty good advice uh, when we get to the later rounds. But anyways, I'm gonna shout those guys out. I'll put the Reddit post in there as well as, as Casual Gamers. Um, YouTube in there so let's go and get started all right so the first thing we're gonna get started with is conquer the Cubs in one turn or less this one's actually pretty straightforward you just move down here and you gotta attack him right away that's all you can do and then attack play game you gotta play it on Hall of Fame that's how you get the Cubs all right so for the next one it is to conquer the Rockies before turn two, or in turn two or less. Uh, now this is where it gets kind of tricky. Now I do want to say I'm playing on one of my alternate accounts, so my team is not very good. Uh, and this is one reason why I kind of think this theory uh, is proven to be correct here. So if you go to the map, is well the theory that I have is that if you have a better team while simming, it will give you a better chance to win. Uh, so that's kind of another tip I have. If you do plan to sim, make sure you guys have your full squad in there. Um, but here's the route you want to take. Now keep in mind, it's on alternate account, so I don't have any players, so I'm probably going to lose this right here. So you guys can see they'll randomly attack me, and they're going to beat me every time because my team is really bad. Um, so I would just keep doing that until you get the sim. Trust me, on my main account where I had a good team, I had no problem with this, but it's going to make me keep restarting it. Uh, you can also just, if you guys want and you don't have a good team, you can choose to just play them right here. You can play them on All-Star if you guys want to do that. Uh, or you can keep simming, but yeah, that's uh, two ways of completing that route. All right, and the next one is probably the most difficult, and that is to conquer the Dodgers before on turn two. 
So first thing you want to do is you want to come down here. Now keep in mind, all these teams, their strongholds are going to build little... Uh, they're going to barricade themselves in. That means they're going to put like a little, you know, outside um, barricade. Just usually one, one layer deep. So you guys want to kind of avoid uh, those barricades. Just stay two spaces away, at least from the stronghold, and you should be fine. So like, I don't want to move all the way over here. You know, that way the Rockies, they could try to, you know, go into battle me and take some fans. You're going to move down here just far enough away from the Rockies. All right. And then you just make a straight line toward the Dodgers. Now, this one's tricky. You're going to have to play still fans on Legend. There's no other way around it. Uh, you have to play a team on Legend. You can play the Dodgers. You don't have to, but if you play the Dodgers and beat them, it makes things easier. Uh, like I said, this was probably the most difficult one for me. Not that it was hard. It was probably just one of the few times that I actually lost. And uh, I got pretty frustrated and I started trying to get the games in. Because I actually beat them on Legend. And then I was kind of screwing around and like lost to them on All-Star Veteran. Uh, so yeah, this uh, this one's probably the most difficult, and there's only one way to complete it like this. So after you steal the fans, um, you will get five reinforcements for stealing fans. And then since you have six territories, for every three territories you have, uh, you get one extra fan. So you'll get two fans, two million fans, plus the six will give you eight. So it'll be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Just enough. So you'd be able to play this game, I believe, on veterans since it's a 2 to 1 ratio. And then on this game right here, in the Stronghold, you're going to have to beat them on Legend because you're only going to have uh, 2 million fans versus you know 14 or whatever they have. You can take some of that down if you beat them, it's still fans, so it might be able to go down the Hall of Fame. I'm not sure, but I believe it's only Legend. Uh, and also, key tip for playing the Dodgers, guys, they have a lot of lefties, you know, like Kershaw uh, and Rich Hill and Alex Wood. And they're pretty tough lefties at that, so when you play the Dodgers, I would stack your lineup with all righties because more likely than not, you're going to be facing Kershaw or one of those other lefties, and it's going to be very difficult to hit them if you have a lot of lefties in your lineup. All right, so let's move on to the next turn. All right, and the next one we have is Conquer the Rangers on or before turn two. Uh, this one you kind of want to make a diagonal line down there. You can start on either way here, the left or right hexagon. It doesn't really matter. But let's just start with this one. Remember, you want to kind of avoid There's the circle around them. They're on their stronghold. All right, so once you get down here, uh, you can steal fans from Texas. All right, and so for the steal fans phase, you can do legend, uh, but you could also do all-star for your lowest. So whatever you guys want to do, all-star, hall of fame, or legend. I personally probably would just do hall of fame. And, and then you, once you get down there, You'll have enough fans in your next turn. You're going to have to play one of their outside territories on Rookie. And then you can play the Rangers. Uh, this one's not too bad. I believe you'll be able to play them on All-Star Hall of Fame. Depending if you still fans from them have success. If you still fans from them, you should be able to play like on Veteran. Uh, so this one's not too bad. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so for this next sequence, we're gonna be able to knock out three missions at once. Uh, we're gonna be able to take the Yankees by turn two or less, then the Orioles and Red Sox by turn four or less. So starting out, you're gonna make a straight line towards the Yankees. You're gonna run into some resistance from the Brewers. Uh, you can try to sim this interaction if you want right here. Play them on All-Star, it's up to you. Um, so yeah, so you can either sim that or play it out, and then you're gonna move here, and then you'll be right here, the turn will be over, and then you'll have to still fans. Uh, you can still fans from Detroit since you're going to play them soon, or you can do the Yankees, Red Sox, and Orioles. Uh, I don't really recommend the Yankees because, for the most part, you're going to have to play them on Legend whenever you get up there no matter what because they start out with the most fans. So maybe you want to take some from the Red Sox or Orioles to make it a little easier at the end. But either way, uh, you're going to get just enough reinforcements. Uh, so again, you're going to get 1 million fans per 3 territories. So you'll have 6 of those, so that'll give you 2 reinforcements plus 5. For stealing fans on Legend, that's going to give you uh, seven reinforcements. So we'll start here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. So you're going to get to here with two fans, and you're most likely going to have to play the Yankees on Legend. Uh, so once you beat them, you can make your way up toward Boston. And at this point, I would just recommend stealing fans on Hall of Fame for the last few turns. But you'll be able to make it up to here to Boston. All right, beat Boston. You'll be able to reinforce back at the Yankee Stronghold. And as long as your line is still connected, which for the most part it should be, you can reinforce back at the Yankees and then make your way down to the Orioles, which should all be possible before turn four or less. If it messes up 
and you only get the Yankees or whatever, or you only get the Yankees and Red Sox, um, it'll still save you time. So I would still attempt to knock out all three at once. All right, so the next sequence is to take the Brewers on or before turn two. You have a few options here. Uh, this one isn't too difficult, though, so you can just make your way toward the Brewers. All right, and then at this point, you can decide to go ahead and start playing them. Um, or you can try to sim this if you want. That's up to you and just make reinforcements. I'd probably just play it out. So say you play this out and you win, you'll have one fan here. And then you'll be able to steal fans. You guys can do, honestly, you can do veteran or all-star. It's up to you. Uh, they only have seven fans, so you can steal three or four fans and then play them on veteran or all-star. It really depends what you guys want to do. Uh, this one isn't too difficult, though, and it's pretty much straightforward. So we're going to move on to the next one. All right, so the next sequence is going to be to take the Cincinnati Red Stronghold by turn three or less. Um, so this one isn't too bad either, and you have a few different ways to approach this. Uh, but first, you want to make your way down there. Again, avoid the circle from the strongholds. All right, so we get right down here. Uh, and then I would definitely steal fans. I don't believe you have to steal fans on Legend. You could probably just do Hall of Fame. Uh, if you want to do Legend to make the final game easier, go ahead. Um, but let's just say we still on Hall of Fame. Do the math real quick. So we're going to get two from our territories. And then we'll get four. So we'll have seven reinforcements right here. So it'll be seven, six, five, four, three, two. And then you've already stolen uh four fans from the red so you could probably play that game on all-star uh, you could also skip to the next turn if you guys want to reinforce and it should be an easy matchup now of course if anybody gets in your way just play it out guys you're gonna have to play a lot of these games like on rookie or veteran but like i said it's good for grinding uh, so that's how you get the reds in three turns or less all right your next sequence is going to be to capture the Arizona stronghold in three turns or less. Uh, this one's not too bad either. Just make your way down there. Avoid the barricades for the strongholds. All right, and you'll actually be able to play your still fans on. You can do legend, but it's not necessary. Again, we still have three turns, so we're just gonna assume we do Hall of Fame. I feel like that's a more safer bet. So say we do Hall of Fame, we're gonna get two, t uh, two million fans from our territories plus four, so six, and there's seven plus one. So we're gonna start here with seven. So it'll be seven, right here, seven, six, five, four, three. So we'll be able to get three fans right here uh, on turn two, and you could play them right away and honestly beat them. So you can honestly do this in two turns. It's not that difficult. If you guys wanna reinforce and still fans again to make the last game even easier, feel free, but it's not necessary. All right, and the next one's probably one of the more difficult ones. Um, outside of the Dodgers, and that is to capture the Miami Marlins stronghold in three turns or less. You guys can see it is all the way down there, uh, and this one actually requires a little bit more strategy, but go ahead and start making your way down. So you're going to have to steal fans every turn on Legend if you want to make it all the way down there. Uh, so let's say we steal fans, five fans, and keep in mind, you're going to have to play Tampa and Miami, and they don't have too many fans, so you're going to have to play them uh, both. I would just recommend playing both of them. And taking all their fans and it's gonna be real easy once you get down there but you're gonna to have to do still fans twice on legend so say we get eight reinforcements here it'd be seven six five four three two one all right and then we'll be able to get another set of reinforcements that will be able to get us all the way down here just keep making your way all right and once you eventually get down to miami um you'll be able to play them on an easier difficulty they should only have a couple fans left uh, so yeah, this one the trick is to play Legend on still fans, one on Tampa and then one on Miami. All right, so this next one we're gonna capture the Giant Stronghold in three turns or less. Uh, the key tip here is you guys want to go up one instead of taking a direct route, because if you take a direct route, you're gonna run into uh, the barricades of the Rockies and the Ace stronghold so you want to go up one and then start taking a direct route and in this one you don't have to do um, legend every time unless you want to you can maybe do it the first time but uh, hall of fame should be sufficient enough to get you guys there so let's just do the math all right so say we still fans on hall of fame that's going to give us seven right here seven six five four three two one you guys can see we made it all the way over here 
and we still have one more turn to go. You can still fans again. You could even do all star. Um, so that'd give you three fans plus an additional. Let's see. So yeah, if you stole fans on all star here, uh, you'd also get an additional four fans from your territories. That'd give you seven total, so you'd have plenty. Six, so seven, six, five, four. Uh, and you'd be able to play the Giants. Um, they do have a number of fans, so you might have to play on like an All Star Hall of Fame. Um, so it's really how you guys want to do it. If you want to play Legend both times to make the final game a little easier, go ahead. Um, but yeah, this one's pretty much straightforward. All right, so now is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Uh, but guys, don't worry. I honestly think this is a little easier. It's just a little more tedious. Um, so the next one we're going to do, and by the way, I want to throw this out there. Uh, the next two, actually, you can combine with the last three missions if you guys want. So the next two ones we have to go over are the NL Central in four or less turns, or the AL West in six or less turns. So you guys can do, say you want to do the AL West first and knock them out. Well, then you could do the NL Central in four turns or less, and then you can also start knocking out the whole entire map. Because the last three missions, you're going to have to capture the entire map and I believe it's 12 turns or less, 14 or 16, but you want to do it in 12 turns or less the first time or else it's going to take you forever to redo it. So you want to go for 12 turns or less and it will complete uh, Conquest at this point. So technically, if you're looking at it like this, you really only have two turns uh, or two missions left because you can knock the last four out together. But here's what I recommend. I recommend doing the NL Central in four or less turns, so let's talk about that. Uh, pretty straightforward. You want to make your way over toward Milwaukee. Alright. And then you can play this game right here. It should have one space. You can play that on Veteran. And then you can play Milwaukee. Or actually at this point you'll have to still fans. And then you can play Milwaukee. Now you don't have to still fans on Legend for this one. Honestly you could just do Hall of Fame and it should be fine. But if you guys want to you can play Legend the first time just to make it a little easier for you. Um, but I'm just going to assume we're doing Hall of Fame just to show you guys that it's possible. So again, we're right here. Uh, say we do Hall of Fame, we're going to end up with seven spaces. So seven, six, five, four, three. Should have. If you play on Hall of Fame, you'll have three fans when you get to the Cubs. You can go ahead and play them if you want. Probably have to play them on All Star Hall of Fame as well. But you can knock them out. Do three, two, and start making your way down to the Cardinals. So you'd be a one right here. So you'll have two teams knocked out uh, within the first turn by only playing still fans on Hall of Fame. If you want to do Legend, you'll be two turns ahead right here. So that's up to you guys. I would at least do Hall of Fame though. All right. So the next time we're going to have, let's see, say we still fans again at uh, on Hall of Fame. So that'll be four plus additional four territory. So we should have eight spaces. So eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. So right here by turn three, you could be this far just by playing uh, your still fans on Hall of Fame. Um, if you guys wanted to do them on both Legend, you could probably play the Reds already. And then of course the Pirates are right here, so just make your way toward them. It's not too bad, guys. Uh, it's just a matter of you want to do Hall of Fame or Legend. Um, I think this would be possible with All-Star. Some of you guys, if you really, really want to play this on All-Star, you're going to kind of have to do the math on your own. I'm kind of assuming that most of you guys can beat the computer on Hall of Fame, um, but if you guys like want to do this on All Star, you can always crunch your numbers. Remember, for every t for every three territories, we'll give you one million fans, and then you add the reinforcements you get for still fans. Whether it's on Legend, it gives you five, Hall of Fame for four, All Star for three, and so on. So you guys can always do the math if you want. Remember, you have to have at least two in a territory to attack. Alright guys, so this is going to be the final sequence for you guys in order to finish Conquest Extreme. Uh, now, again, we're going to combine the ALO West mission in 6 turns or less, and then we're going to capture the whole entire map in 12 turns or less. Keep in mind, the final three are um, capture the entire stronghold in 12 turns, and I believe 14 and 16. Really, the only one you want to worry about is 12 turns or less, because you don't want to do this multiple times. You don't want to do it, oh, like, you know, 14 and then do 12. You want to knock it all at once because it does take a lot of time. Uh, and that is what I did. Now, I want to say uh, you have a lot of flexibility uh, with this final mission. I recommend playing as many games as possible early on for this final sequence, though, on Legend or Hall of Fame. Try to play your first few games on Legend. Try to win them. 
and then start going to Hall of Fame. Now, I believe I only played the first two on Legend, and then I basically just did Hall of Fame from there. And the only other time I would play on Legend was to capture Strongholds. There's a few instances where I had the opportunity to play a uh, Stronghold on Legend. It'd be like, I think I played the Yankees on Legend. It was like I had one fan, or two fans, versus, you know, whatever they had. I think they had even more at the time. They had like 30-plus fans. So um, take advantage of those opportunities. If you guys lose those games in the Strongholds, it's really not a big deal. The most important thing about this final phase, guys, is to win your still fans phases. All right? Now, I believe the user on Reddit, I think he said he did the first nine turns on Legend, and he won eight out of nine. So if you guys can do that, if you guys can even win seven out of nine, that's good. Um, but I honestly would recommend just if you can win all of them on All-Star or Hall of Fame, I'd recommend going that route. Don't risk it, especially early on, because you have to complete the ALS first and then the rest of the of the map so you want to make sure you can get the AL West um, in six turns or less before you can even do anything else or it won't even count so I would recommend again playing the first few on legend and then go to Hall of Fame so let's kind of talk about the route uh, in which I took and again I got a lot of this advice uh, from the reddit user Leonard uh, B19 so I actually got this tip from him he actually started uh, at the Royals alright so yeah actually you can sit in this game if you guys lose some fans here you can just restart like I lost some fans you can restart that interaction if you want because it's not too far and again I'm getting my butt kicked because my team isn't very good on this alternate account but I would sim that first interaction and then play this play this game knock it out take their stronghold uh, and then start stealing fans I, I did the first few on legend um, I would recommend at least doing the first few on legend if you can alright and then make your way down to Texas I'm not gonna go through every precise route because you do have a lot of flexibility with this but go take out Texas and then make your way down to Houston again while you're stealing fans you know on Hall of Fame or Legend the first few turns alright so once you take out Houston if you have any extra fans if you have an uninterrupted uh, route line from your original stronghold to Houston you can move fans back to your original stronghold now if you have a few left over there um, it's not really a big deal and if you know say the computer breaks it up it's not really a big deal just leave them down there for now but you want to reinforce uh, once you take over Kansas City, Texas, and Houston at your original stronghold, go up a few hexagons, all right, and then make your way over towards Seattle to take out the rest of the AL West. All right, move down and then take out the A's and then move over here, take out the Angels. And then at that point, you are done. It should only take you four to five turns if you're playing your games on Hall of Fame or Legend. Uh, again, if you guys cannot win on Hall of Fame or Legend, you guys want to do the math and see if you can complete it on All Star. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not possible if you do it on veteran or rookie, um, but you guys can always do the math. Just count the number of territories, you know, and divide it by three, and then plus add your um, however many fans you still. Um, but at this point, you have a lot of flexibility. Um, for me, this was at the end of turn five, so I completed this in five turns. All right, and then I went ahead and took out the Dodgers, and then I went ahead and took out the Rockies. And then you can also take out the D-backs. If you guys want to get them later on, that's fine. Um, but the teams that I left over here for a while were the Giants and the Rockies. So uh, once you take out all those teams, this is where you start chipping away at the uh, East Coast. And I started, so yeah, you can start doing your reinforcements. You guys can either do here at Texas, or if you guys want, you can do Kansas City. Um, it's totally up to you. But here's kind of what I did. I was still following the path. Uh, from the user on reddit. I reinforced Over here in the Midwest at Kansas City. I went ahead and took out the Cubs and the White Sox And then I reinforced down here again. I'm still I'm still stealing fans every round um, Up to this point So make sure you're still doing that at this point you can start probably doing them on all-star Hall of Fame But anyways once you take out the Cubs and the White Sox I reinforced, keep in mind I'm still stealing fans on All-Star Hall of Fame, and I'm still playing for every single space. Do not be simming any games, only very at the very beginning, and at the end you'll have some flexibility to sim, but other than that, don't be simming any games. Uh, but anyways, reinforce at Texas. Alright, then you can make your way, take out the Cardinals, and then make your way over, take out the Braves, and then go ahead and take out the rest of the Southeast, take out the Rays, and then you can take out the Marlins. Um, here's what I actually did when I got to Atlanta. I went ahead and took out Washington because at the time, and again, this is just kind of using common sense. I had a lot of reinforcements, so I wanted to make this game versus Washington a little bit easier. And then I made my way down to Tampa and Miami. Uh, just kind of 
use common sense. You know, it's easier to play teams like Tampa or Miami on Hall of Fame or Legend compared to Washington. I think I ended up playing Washington on All Star, moved down here, and then I was able to play Tampa and Miami on either Hall of Fame or Legend. Again, I had to play some strongholds on Legend. It's not a big deal if you lose a stronghold game on Legend because you can just reinforce and still play it. But if you have that opportunity to take them out um, with two fans versus however many they got, go for it. Um, anyways, it should still not be that difficult to take out the Rays and the Marlins because they only have six fans apiece. So once I was done with the Rays and Marlins, um, I was done with turn eight and I had over half the map completed. And then I really just had to focus on the north and northeast and there were still a few teams out west that I had to complete which we're not going to be a big deal because I could reinforce. All right, so at this point, you're going to have a lot of flexibility. Uh, you just want to reinforce at certain strongholds and take out, start taking out as many regions as possible. Um, so what I would recommend once you get to like turn seven, turn eight, is to start splitting your reinforcements into two or three ways. Uh, so for instance, I could, you know, reinforce at Washington and work my way up to Baltimore and then, you know, take out Philly and then the Mets and then maybe the Yankees if I have enough and then I could also say reinforce over here in the Midwest and then you know take out you know the Brewers and then the Tigers and then the Indians uh, you just want to start splitting your reinforcements but at this point you're gonna start exponentially gaining more reinforcements because you're just gonna be getting uh, that much more territories but you still want to keep stealing fans at least at this point, say you're on turn 8, turn 9, you still want to be stealing fans. Um, I would say turn 7 to turn 9, you still want to keep stealing fans on the all-star difficulty. Uh, the last few turns, if you're confident enough and you have enough fans, you don't need to steal fans if you don't want. It still wouldn't be a bad idea to steal a few, you know, at least on veteran, especially if you're still grinding. Alright, so I switched back over to my other account, and this is what the map looked like when I was done. Um, the very last few teams that I got were the last, actually the last four that I got uh, were the Rockies right here and then the Giants because they were way out here in the west still so I reinforced a few and got them it wasn't too bad and then I believe the Reds also for whatever reason uh, they were just kind of out in the middle of nowhere so I didn't get them yet at the time you know so you could just reinforce you know at the White Sox or whatever to get them or the Pirates but my very last one was here at the uh, Blue Jays you guys can see I have the most fans there uh, I hope that helped, guys. I know some of it was uh, kind of vague, but I do encourage you guys to you know, kind of do your own math. Uh, be, make your own judgments, but also be very conservative when you're doing so. Uh, just don't go right into it, you know, thinking you can just steal fans on All-Star every single time. Make sure you're doing the math, all right? Now, I didn't do, like, exact algorithms on how many times you can play All-Star and all that and whatnot. I just did my basic approach, and it worked out really well for me. And I honestly had a lot of flexibility at the end. Um, and I started simming games because I started to get a little impatient. I don't recommend doing that, but I had confidence I had enough fans and I dispersed them well enough to where if something went wrong, I would have some other fans nearby to where I could still capture that stronghold. Uh, also, one more tip. Once you guys complete this, I would go ahead and recommend uh, just go ahead and simming the territories um, and go ahead and get your, uh, you should get another 10-pack bundle in the original Conquest. In the original Conquest. So I plan on doing that, and that's why I went to the other map, because I didn't want to mess that up and just restart it. Uh, but yeah, if you conquer every hexagon, you'll be able to get another 10-pack bundle. And I actually, in my last bundle, and my con and I got into Conquest pack, I pulled three diamonds. So uh, it can be worth it. So I would, I would recommend completing that. And again, here, let's look at the rewards at the very end. Uh, you guys should have seen them in the beginning, but here they are again. Here's, um, well, here's all the rewards. Drew Storin, get to Cepeda, Earl Hershiser, it's not a bad card. All right, Dozier is a solid card, but it's really these final two cards, and plus the fact you get 35,000 subs. This Molina last year, I think, was a 99. Both these cards are like 99, in my opinion. Um, the ratings are just a little bit different. And then this is Matt Kemp, so. I hope that helped, guys. I know it was incredibly long. I'm going to try to put timestamps in the description, um, so bear with me. If you guys have any more advice, help each other in the comments below. If you guys have any questions on Twitter, uh, go ahead and ask, and I can try to help the best that I can. Anyways, guys, uh, please leave a like, and if you guys aren't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, it took a lot to do this video and to complete Conquest Extreme, and I know I was one of the first YouTubers to actually complete it and do a video on it. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot, guys, for watching, and I hope you guys have a good day. Peace.